Hello people of YouTube, Rich from PC Games N here, and the latest Total War Warhammer DLC is less than a week away. Fans of the insidious Ratmen, the Skaven, will no doubt be excited by the coming of Ikit Claw, the most talented and depraved warlock engineer of Clan Scryer, and thus one of the most Skaven of all Skaven legendary lords. We spoke to Creative Assembly about why they went for Ikit Claw and how they went about bringing him to Total War Warhammer. For Ikit Claw specifically, it's, it's due to his uh, association with Clan Scryer, obviously. We wanted to get those uh, techno units in, and there's really only one Lord that fits like 100% well with the, that sort of group of units, and that's Ikit Claw. Yeah. Um, on Tehenhaman's side, he's the prophet of Sotek. Yeah. He is, uh, he's um, the leader of a new cult, so that gave us another opportunity to get, again expand into you know, red-crested skinks and uh, the uh, salamander packs and the Ark of Sotek and things that are just associated with that prophet and that religion, so. I think I think they work really well together as well as Lords mm -hmm. because, yeah, Tehenhauen is sort of the uh, the anti-Skaven guy. He really hates Skaven. He, um, lives, so he lives to kill Skaven. He does, he, he literally yeah. lives, he lives to kill, to kill Skaven. Skaven. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's sort of like this this battle of almost kind of, he's a very religious figure within the, the lizard men. And then you've got Ikit Claw, which is kind of, yeah, all about technology and science. So it's, it's just a very good matchup, essentially, which is something we always like to have for our, our yeah. Lord packs, which is a head-to-head. -head. I think the story was like, was there to be told, to be honest. It's just the, that whole conflict between Ratmen and Lizardmen um, was great to play on. I mean, especially with characters like Tehenawin and Ikit Claw. I mean, Ikit Claw is just, he just wants to, he just wants to destroy things and Factoring in this war, he just wants to just, you know go to Lustria and wipe out all the all the um, all the lizardmen that are there. Um, whereas to um, you know, his he's about you know killing a Skaven. So it, the story told itself essentially, I think, um, for these lords especially. As ever, the lore behind these characters has directly inspired their new mechanics. The Skaven will get the ability to build an under-empire, burrowing under the cities of the world, and that's coming in a free patch regardless of whether or not you actually buy the DLC. But Ikit Claw gets a special project in his under-empires, the Doom Sphere, which is Warhammer's version of a nuclear bomb, and Ikit's lifelong obsession. The bigger your under-empire grows, though, the more likely it is to be discovered, and building a Doom Sphere is quite a big undertaking. But so, so presumably, if you're going for a, a doom sphere, there's a little bit of risk reward in it. Like, you're, if you're actually going for a doom sphere, you're that much more discoverable. Yeah. You're, so you're you're very discoverable when you're kind of, <laughs> as you can imagine, trying to dis like assemble this weapon that will destroy a city, um, which is yeah, again, kind of very like the law. Um, there's quite a few kind of instances in the stories of Ikit Claw where he's tried to assemble a doom sphere below dwarven yeah. Carax, yeah. and then he's been kind of foiled at the last minute. So yeah, I imagine that happens. yeah, I imagine we'll be seeing a lot of a lot of stories exactly like that when people get their hands on it. You've also you've got the war camp as well, which yeah. is also a massive thing. Yeah, that will allow you to kind of spawn an army from the Ender Empire, which then kind of comes to the surface and allows you to attack the region. So sorry, the, the war camp. Yeah, so you get a lot of different building options basically in the Ender Empire. Um, lots of different things you can do to maybe upset the region, I guess you could say. Like, like, like I sort of um, alluded to earlier, it does feel like there's a lot more, um, yeah, nuke-ish nuke spells or abilities both in the battle and in the campaign. Um, is that something that you're at all? What implications does it have for, for campaign balance or for the uh, or for battle balance? It's definitely a challenge for sure. Um, we def we've got the gating mechanics there, so you can't just um, uh, roll out nukes every turn. Uh, they're quite a rare um, occurrence, actually, in campaign. Like, uh, they're more there for, like... I mean, you could use it in a battle, in a normal battle, and win that battle fairly easily, but you really want to be keeping these nukes for those pivotal battles that you need to win when you're at number two to one, when you're attacking uh, a level four settlement or something like that. They can really tip the balance in those cases, but, um, yeah, they're not you're not going to get them every turn. I think the other important thing to mention is that these two campaigns for Ten Howen and Ikit, they're both quite hard. Nice. They're definitely harder than a standard campaign. Um, so 
yeah, I think I think it works really well that you do have access to this powerful stuff, but you also are in a really difficult situation with which you need something powerful. Um, so yeah, you're up against it, but then you can turn the tables with these these things. Um, so I think it's balanced in that regard at least. But the Doom Sphere is only the most obvious example of Ikit's demented determination to blow things up. As the most talented warlock engineer of Clan Scryer, the occult weaponsmiths of the Skaven, his inventions are all over this DLC, and bringing him to life at a personal level was as much about animating his bizarre weaponry as reflecting his deeds and his personality. Ikit Claw must have stood out as well though, right? Because he's, he's, he's crazy, he's uh, He did, but you know, yeah, yeah. A lot of, a lot of our Skaven Lords, um, you know, their personalities come across in w what they do rather than how they say things. Um, I think Ikit Claw is like, you know, he's well-traveled a bit more, better spoken than other, than other uh, Skaven Lords. So yeah, he was quite interesting to write as well. A bit more blue-blooded. Yeah, I'd say. I think, yeah. I think <laughs> Ikit Claw's personality comes across more in his, uh, in how he's animated. For sure, like um, he, um, his attacks range. Like, he will be using his halberd and a flamethrower at the same time in melee. He will be using uh, his backpack to propel himself forward. Uh, 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 yes. That's cool. So when he's charging, he won't just be running. He'll be blasting forwards. Uh, in melee, he'll be like doing little hops and like slamming down and stuff. Like his animations really just sort of do his character justice in that regard. They really sort of sell that. I am a mad scientist on the very edge of my sort of capabilities. So. Nice. Ikit is on the next level of craziness. He's right. just, he has this jetpack on the back, like I don't know the designer mentioned, but it was something between the animator and the designer. They're like, oh, let's do this. So he have a jetpack, he have a lightning halberd, and he has a flamethrower, and he's just all over the place. And the animation was just kind of crazy. He's jumping, he's like using this jetpack, and he's exploding and just yeah swipe swiping everything it's just kind of crazy cool character cool. were there any um animations when it came to a kit that you're especially proud of or the, like there is one everybody loved it was like the jumping attack uh we have this play test all the team is looking at and the animator was waiting in the corner and Actually, so Ikit is running and then he's using the jetpack to fly in the air and just like yeah, bump into the, all the enemies and explode them, and it was it was really surprising and really cool. How did you conceive of the idea? Because I don't think I mean he, I know he's got a big backpack on his model, his tabletop model, yes. but it's not it, not that I'm aware of. Is it obvious that it would be a jetpack? Because he doesn't have flying wheels. No, I think it's just it was like a discussion, and people are like, "Hey, what about he actually has used a jetpack?" Like, well, okay, let's try it out, and then VFX added some effect, and it worked. It worked. It's working. Usually when we kind of take the uh, take the rules from tabletop and kind of play with them a little bit, we always check with Games Workshop first. So we'll always kind of collaborate mm -hmm. with them on it uh, and see if they're happy with us taking that approach. And if they are, you know, great, that gives us more freedom. Obviously, if they want to, you know, make sure that we respect that law, we step back and find another solution. Another example of this collaboration with Games Workshop was creating the Warlock Master, a new lord that didn't exist in the tabletop game. Anything you were especially proud of? Warlock Master, I think. Yeah, for me, yeah. Uh, that was a, it's nice when we've got ones where it's a lot of collaboration between us and, and Games Workshop, where we kind of, kind of there's a lot of back and forth. And for this one, we, we had it in the lore, it's like, okay, we've got this this character that would fit really well with Ikit. What can we do to make it impressive? And it was the, the kind of like two claw hands on either hand. Right. Uh, figuring out how to make it work was a bit of a pain because we obviously never never thought about having two claw hands ever previously. So we tried to make the claw match up with the fingers so they could bend with the fingers and then the wrist would match with the wrist bone. And then they could just t take the wrist bone and spin it and spin it like a drill. Right. Uh, because it, it would just, if you take, you know, if you take a human wrist, it obviously it would break, but yeah. with this, you can just take it as far as you really want to. Uh, and seeing that kind of technically achieved in game and having those kind of effects with all the different, because we've had got quite a few weapons for that character as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's really, really cool. And I think that's, that's probably my favorite part of the pack. Yeah, with his madness, like, was there any um, way that you sort of depicted that in his in his personality? Any particular uh, ticks or, or movements or animations that he has? That... How to make this guy still very jittery as Kaven, but completely crazy, take him to the next level, and just play with everything he has and all the weapons. And okay, he has that weapon. What can I do with it? How can I like add this weapon plus that one and make them work all together? That any other scaven have that many 
weapon at the same time. Did you do anything with the claw where it kind of jibbed a little bit? Yeah. So I think it did. Everything that was is kind of different. Yeah, where you had that yeah. big solid claw in his arm and you kind of see it yeah. almost taking a bit of it, the personality of the character and kind of just like, you know, twitching a little bit. I think that was quite a nice touch. He yeah, has just moving a lot and swiping and rolling over and just. He's very, very active. Hyper. Yeah, hyper, we can say. There's a real sense of cohesion to the Prophet and the Warlock, even more so than last year's Queen and Crone. Ickit's warpstone dusted paw prints are all over the Skaven side of the roster, and this has actually led CA to give a subtle overhaul to the mad technology that was already there. Probably one of the most interesting ones we've had um, for Skaven, just because visually he's so demanding. You know, he's got a lot of kind of glowing effects going everywhere, and it's kind of determined some of those, some of the way the additional units look in uh, the pack as well. Is we've kind of taken a lot of inspiration from Ikit's original design and propagated that over to some of the new units, but we've also gone back to some of the older units and right. kind of given them a bit more of a flair similar to Ikit, where we've kind of pushed their effects a bit more because we learn a lot from Ikit. Uh, things like the electricity kind of flowing, well, the warp stone flowing through his backpack and flowing through his weapon. And um, we've tried to take that back to some of the units like the Hellpit Abomination, for example. Okay. So he's got like a crackling, you know, kind of it's a live effect running through his body, very subtle, but it's there and it should hopefully pop enough so you can kind of sit really see in game. Overall, it really feels like the Skaven are becoming their best ratty selves with this DLC, not just in the fleshing out of their roster, but with the Under Empire and in their campaign mechanics as well. We'll leave you with a story that I think really says it all, but if you've enjoyed this video, do remember to give us a like, comment below with your thoughts, subscribe to PC Games End for plenty more like it, and we'll see you next time. Take care. I think for me, um, yeah, there was one of the points where one of the, the QA guys was, was testing some stuff out, um, and he was, he was testing the Doom Spheres, and uh, he'd, he'd spread throughout the Southlands this, this massive Greek sort of under empire, and then he was, yeah, he was trying out one of the Doom Spheres, and I said to him, I wonder what would happen if you put a Doom Sphere in every single under empire region in the Southlands and de detonated them all at once. Uh, so kind of half hour went by and then like, he sent me a, a little video later on <laughs> and it was basically just this cutscene and then all you see is just like this first yeah Armageddon. massive explosion <laughs> and then behind you just see these other massive green kind of massive explosions just destroying essentially a whole continent and I was like that's nice. when I was like yes we've kind of we've done it <laughs> impressive yeah that's very icky core so yeah it was good <laughs>